and looks like we have another exciting discovery coming from the outskirts of the solar system. But this time, strangely enough, just like in the previous discovery I've discussed a few months back, we might have even more evidence that Planet 9 either doesn't exist or seems to orbit in an entirely different location, which makes it even more difficult to explain, which by itself presents us with a somewhat interesting scenario. And so let's discuss these new discoveries in a bit more detail, but let's start with a brief overview of what we actually know so far and what it's all about. And well, for the past few years, quite a lot of scientists were pretty certain that Planet 9, or essentially this mysterious ninth planet, potentially slightly smaller than Neptune, seemed to represent the best explanation for some of the observations from the solar system. For example, very strange orbits of extremely distant objects, especially objects we often refer to as sadnoids. A type of a trans-Neptunian object with extremely elliptical orbit and whose orbit is far enough from Neptune where it does not seem to receive any orbital effects from any of the major planets. And they're called sadnoids because of the first member, Sedna. And so this hypothetical and elusive Planet 9 was supposed to explain these orbital groupings and a lot of other orbital parameters, including certain inclinations of planets like Uranus and Neptune and a few more bizarre things here and there. You can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description. But then, in the beginning of 2025, something somewhat bizarre was discovered right at the outskirts of the solar system, where we actually don't expect pretty much anything. It was reported in June of 2025 in this paper, and it was essentially a discovery of a really large object, 2017 OF201, whose orbit was somewhat extreme. And so here, by combining years of observations going all the way back to 2012, Scientists confirmed that in this case, for some reason this particular object, or this very bizarre, relatively massive dwarf planet candidate, currently located 9 astronomical units away from us, seemed to possess a truly extreme and somewhat bizarre orbit, extending all the way into the inner Oort cloud with a semi-major axis of 883 astronomical units. And because this object was at least 700 kilometers across, it actually made it the second largest known object in its dynamical population, or one of the largest dwarf planets discovered so far. But the reason this discovery was so important was because the orbit of this object that takes approximately 24,000 years would be extremely difficult to explain if Planet 9 was indeed in the location where we always thought it to be. And that's because its unusual orbit did not align with other extreme objects like Sedna and did not obey any clustering proposed by the Planet 9 hypothesis. And furthermore, the additional simulations reveal that if Planet 9 indeed existed in this location, it would have actually kicked out this object a long time ago. The orbit of this object does not seem to be stable for more than 100 million years if there is any hidden large planet in this region. And though at first even the scientists behind this paper stated that, well, this might actually kill the hypothesis completely, in the last few months they actually kind of took back some of these comments, reiterating that the discovery of this object seems to dramatically decrease the chance for its existence. But this was obviously just the first discovery. And as the scientists in this original paper suggested, there might be even more of these objects hiding out there, and very likely thousands of them yet to be discovered. Which is in essence what just happened once again. This was released approximately a month and a half after, and it was another discovery of a sadnoid at a very far away distance. And, well, as the title of the video suggests, this one challenges the hypothesis even more, because once again the orbit in this case is just extremely difficult to explain if there is a ninth planet somewhere out there. And so let's talk about this most recent discovery and why it's kind of important. But first of all, despite the incredible power of modern telescopes, the outer reaches of the solar system are still largely unexplored. And that's because they're so far away that the sunlight barely reaches any of these regions, making all of these objects incredibly dim. But as the telescopes get better and better, we seem to discover more and more of these objects, especially the ones in the closest approach to the Sun, and especially the ones that are slightly larger, size of a typical dwarf planet. And that's kind of what happened now as well. This new object is now nicknamed Ammonite, although its official name is 2023 KQ14. And just like some of the previous objects, this one is also a sadnoid. A subclass of trans-Neptunian objects following extreme eccentric orbits and far enough from the Sun where they don't really receive any effects from Neptune. And this is exciting because we don't really know of that many sadnoids, making this a super intriguing object. As you can see from this simulation by Subaru Telescope, today we technically know of only four such objects. 
And so in this case, this discovery was made by astronomers using the Japan's Subaru telescope when it was doing its fossil observing program. In this case, fossil stands for formation of the outer solar system, an icy legacy. But the initial discovery was obviously not enough. Here they had to find additional observations and possibly even pre-discoveries in order to determine its orbit. And so by using the Canada-France Hawaii telescope that contains some of the other data, researchers confirmed the existence of this object and confirmed its orbit by looking at pictures from 19 years ago. And this particular object seems to be quite unique. Or at least unique in terms of its orbit. And that's because here computer simulations show us that the orbit in this case must have been stable for at least four and a half billion years, going back all the way to the beginning of the solar system. But in the past, approximately 4.2 billion years ago, its orbit must have been similar to other satinoids, yet right now it seems to find itself in what's known as the odd gap. The strange gap in distant solar system objects when it comes to perihelion or the closest approach in terms of distance to the sun. And it just so happens that this object, ammonite, seems to sit right inside the gap. And that means that the orbit of this object does not align with any of the other sadenoids and also fills the previously unexplained Q gap in the observed distribution of distant solar system objects. And previously nothing has been discovered in this particular gap, making this a really interesting and very important discovery for scientists studying the solar system, dwarf planets and trans-Neptunian objects. And so the fact that the orbit of this object does not align at all with other three sadenoids dramatically lowers the existence of Planet 9, especially because in some of the previous propositions the hypothesis relied a lot on these sadenoids and their orbits. And because now we have these two objects that seem to question its existence, in just these two months researchers were able to find two pieces of evidence that kind of put a huge dent into the hypothesis. And that's despite the fact that for years astronomers theorized that this elusive Planet 9 might be the best explanation for the puzzling orbital groupings of various TNOs. But there was also a lot of counter evidence suggesting that this bizarre clustering could actually just be our bias. And in reality a lot of these gravitational influences seem to possibly come from the galaxy itself or from the so-called galactic tides and not from some kind of a mysterious planet. And so because in this case we have another object whose unique orbit does not align with the hypothesis and with other sadenoids, this dramatically lowers the likelihood of Planet 9 or at the least places a huge constraint on its possible size and its potential orbit. Or just to rephrase this, here we have these two major outliers that are currently extremely difficult to explain if Planet 9 really exists. And since one of these objects would have been kicked out from the solar system based on previous simulations, Right now, in 2015, a lot of proponents of Planet 9 hypothesis are going to find themselves in a somewhat difficult situation that's going to be kind of hard to explain. But obviously this is not the end, and obviously there are additional explanations. As a matter of fact, it will very likely take at least a few years and a lot of observations from new telescopes such as the Vera Rubin Observatory in order to find even more objects to either clarify where Planet 9 could be hiding or basically to put the end to this hypothesis once and for all. Although here the question is, if not Planet 9, then what is shaping the orbits of these objects? Well, actually for every one of these objects, there are some independent explanations. For example, for Ammonite, scientists believe something extraordinary occurred during the beginning of the solar system, possibly involving some kind of a star passage or interaction with something massive on the outskirts. But that something very likely only happened once billions of years ago. Whereas for the previously mentioned 2017 OF201, here its orbit could have been shaped by the combination of Neptune along with the galactic tides. And with billions of years of interactions, we can definitely end up with orbits that look the same. Mostly because we know that these processes can definitely lead to stable, eccentric and distant orbits we see today. With additional explanations suggesting that maybe there was a planet a long time ago, but it's just no longer there. Or essentially that Planet 9 once existed, possibly for a few hundred million years, and was then kicked out. But that would be extremely difficult to prove, mostly because there is really no evidence for any of this anywhere. But whatever the real answer is, these two discoveries are still very very important. Because they're not just challenging the hypothesis of Planet 9, they're fundamentally changing our perspective of the solar system, because both of these objects are primordial, basically fossils, and studying them is crucial for understanding the full history of the solar system. Moreover, the first object I mentioned is really large. 
And that of course implies that there is a substantial unseen population of similarly large eccentric objects, thousands of which have not been discovered yet. Which can also imply that the Kuiper Belt could actually be much much larger and much more massive, possibly representing at least 1% of planet Earth in total mass. Which of course implies that the solar system is still hiding so many different secrets. But luckily for us, because of these new observatories, like the Vera Rubin Observatory, we're getting just a little bit closer to solving all of these mysteries. And Vera Rubin Observatory is going to begin its decade-long Legacy Survey of Space and Time, or LSST, very very soon. Which honestly means that for the next 12 years or so, we're going to have so much to discuss about the solar system, and of course everything else Vera Rubin discovers around us. And well, chances are that in the next 10 years, we'll probably have our final answer in regards to Planet 9. We'll know exactly where it is, if it exists, or we'll know exactly why it doesn't exist, and what created all of these bizarre effects. And so on that note, once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership where you can get additional footage, early access to various videos, and some other stuff. Or you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.